I am a plant person. That's right, I like plants. House plants. I dabble with plants that exist outside, but where I really thrive are house plants. And while I am no house plant expert, I am somewhat of a house plant mad scientist. In my home every year, one, plants outgrow their pots. I like to clone my plants, and I like to grow them. Every year, I take like half of my house plants and I put them outside for the summer. I have a really dark house, so I like to give mostly my snake plants, I don't know, a little chance for some sunlight. I thought I would share this undertaking with you, not as an expert, but as a mad scientist. It has to happen today. It's getting cold. The frost is coming from my snake plants. <laughs> the frost. I want to start with the ficus because I think he'll be the most happy. So I'm going to put him in this lightweight target planter that has drainage. It's pretty hard to move plants around in their ceramic containers, especially I take my plants to the shower to water them most of the time. And when they are full of water, they weigh 60 pounds. So I think that this is good. But the only problem is I don't think Target has these year round. I think they come out like seasonally in the spring, but if you can find them, Hello? Good thing I brought up the littlest, babyest shovel ever. <sighs> One thing I will say, when we unbox this on stream, we noticed that the roots of this plant, even though it's pretty big, the root system was not very complicated. It was like, hee hee. I'm pretty sure, unless this plant has grown a lot, it's really only like in there this much, I feel. Oh, okay. So her roots are looking way better. I'm just moving things around, getting some dirt out of here. It still feels really unstable in here. It has this like bamboo support stick. It looks, well, it kind of looks like it's leaning this way a little bit. I need the branches to get thicker or something, but he'll be in this pot for a long time. So he'll have plenty of time. I don't know why, I, uh, I didn't see this one before. I swear she before was like, Pew. I I feel like it's opened up a little bit. Now I have to bring her back into the room, so maybe she'll become re-traumatized. Well, we started with the hardest one first, and it used all of my dirt, really, but let's do this while we're on a roll here. This plant, it's in this really pretty planter, which I would love to put any of my various propagations in. Checking it for bugs. I think it's just dirty. We'll wash it then. This plant is growing out of the bottom, and this plant can turn into like a giant tree. In my next video, where we take the outdoor plants and bring them inside, I have a version of this that needs to be repotted immediately and become a floor plant. It has become huge. Um, I'm just gonna put it in this planter. It's um, actually used to be a light, but let's not talk about that. Let's reduce, reuse, recycle. The plant is so sharp. She has been dying to get out. Look at that. The roots must have wrapped the entire 
pot. I thought we would have some soil from the pot itself, but it seems the entire plant was its root system. This plant was chopped in half. I was trying to rescue a raccoon. No, I was trying to rescue a possum and I lifted up a piece of plywood and tried to get the possum to climb down the plywood and I am not strong. Haven't had milk in years. Hey, I dropped the plywood and it chopped this plant in half. And this plant got cut like right here, clean. I was unfamiliar with this plant, I still am, but I just put the clipping the like chopped piece in a glass of water. Kind of forgot about it for months really. Changed the water when it got gross, but I, I didn't have any expectations. And then it started to root. And now it's this complicated, beautiful, scary paper cut. But we'll see, I've given her kind of plenty of room to rest her roots in here. Now while this plant is a total survivor and does amazing in low light, uh, like insane in low light, my cats want to kill this plant. They want to eat it, they want to destroy it. This plant would do so well in my house, but the cats want to kill it, so it has to stay in here. Um, let's take it to the shower and rinse it off. Ew! Let's do another hard one while we're at it. This is the, uh, purple one. This is it. First things first, let me get rid of this water, because it is nasty. Get rid of the dead stuff. This plant confuses me so much because the middle of the vine will die and then the end and the top will still be okay. Grow this plant, in my experience, you just have to put a piece of it in the water. So when I cut it back, basically I'm just detangling the dead stuff out of here, but we could cut all of this up into tiny pieces and unlike a pothos that requires a node, whatever this plant is, is just good. I, walking around, I've seen people planting this plant outdoors, so I'm wondering if just it's a strange thing here. I'm pulling this and there are alive leaves with dead leaves. So I just cut where the life starts, basically. I, I do feel like maybe this wants to grow outside because I've seen it look completely different outside. Like this is my other one that I've grown from the same clipping. And I put that one in soil as an experiment and then this one in water as an experiment. And I think it does well in both. I find that some plants don't want to grow in water. So like this was dead on top and I guess on the bottom. So it'll really just go back in here just like this. I'm excited for these longer pieces, but I don't, I think this is the bottom, so it'll go in like this. No idea where the, what the top or the bottom of this one is. I feel like it came out of here, like the corner. Oh, here we go. Right here. It did come out of the corner. There you go. I want to love this plant. I'm kind of like detaching myself from it because so much of it dies and I'm not quite sure why. I like the idea of it being like this fuller bush instead of like one wimpy long vine where the middle is dead. This is straight from the root. This top part is dead, middle is alive, the bottom is dead. I think I should actually put a clipping of it outside. Actually, this is a pretty firm 
boy. This can go outside. Okay, here is our finished young lady, kind of. I still have to fill it with water, but I think this is much more becoming. And I saved some clippings, and I'm just gonna put this outside and see what happens. Looks way fuller and better. I know some of the leaves are in the water, but it's all kind of an experiment to see what this plant wants. Okay, let's do an easy one. I have this pothos propagating in this Hitoshi uh, glass. One of my favorite parts about propagating is using little cups. Little cups that I have no intention of drinking out of. So it's great for me who has a bunch of possibly toxic McDonald's cups. Not that I think that this is toxic, but I, I don't think I would enjoy but a sip of water. So I'm going to put it in this pot. I don't particularly like this pot, but I think that this particular pothos and how it's propagating kind of looks like a piece of hair. I washed it, but it is pretty delicate. I did kind of break this one piece. So I'm going to lay that down right here. Kind of just as easy as that. So I've kind of doomed this plant to be a, like on the edge of something, a ledge plant because of this, how this is growing, but that's okay. So I realized I have this other viney pothos that I've been propagating that also has quite an, a decent root system. And on these roots, they're kind of yucky. Um, so I think I'm gonna wash this and plant it in there as well. They're both pretty similar looking. Yeah, we'll have to curve it a little bit, but I think that that'll be good. Now, I mean, kind of a mess, so let me wash this planter off. So this is the one I am definitely the most excited about. Look at this root system. Look at this. I am going to be propagating another Monstera for a how to propagate video. And I hope it does this well because I did this one in the summer. So that may have been the secret sauce, but. I have wanted a bookshelf Monstera. I saw the Sar girls had one and I was like, that's so cute because you kind of typically think of a Monstera as a floor plant. So I picked out this perfect, perfect planter. It's glazed. It's like a stout, cool shape, but I need to add drainage. It's getting dark. I don't think you can tell though. This snake plant was actually a cutting I took off of a snake plant I have downstairs, but pieces of it are starting to die um, I, from being overwatered, I think, which is crazy because I don't water my snake plants. This is a little bit of a rescue mish here. Um, and I wanna see, oh yeah, water's coming out of it. I wanna see what the roots look like and then put it into some, some dry soil. Yeah, okay. So if you're comfortable, I feel like the best way to figure out if your plant has root rot is to smell it. Okay, that's not bad. I'm gonna get rid of this yucky. Yeah. And this one is, this one is gonna die too. It looked okay above the surface, but. Otherwise though, it is growing roots. It's growing a lot of roots. Okay, after getting those like rotten pieces out of there, I think that this is gonna be all right. It's still like kind of ooey gooey, but this I think is gonna be nice and strong. And I'm gonna put it in this really dry soil that they make for cactus. It says cactus, palm, and citrus. Is that the last word? Well, I use this for snake plants. And 
then I'm just gonna use a little bit of this old soil just to hold it in place. But yeah, you can like hear how soaking wet this is. I'm gonna use some of this old soil just to hold it in place, but it shouldn't affect it too much. Now I'm good at keeping snake plants alive, but I'm horrible at propagating them. When I have a little root rot at the bottom like that, I always try and save the snake plant. And even as I'm cutting, you can kind of see the like water coming up. So I'm just cutting a little higher. And I'm going to try and put this in the pot with this. My success rate is like two in 10. If you are going to propagate your snake plant, you just want to remember what part was down and what part was up only the bottom part can root and some people will cut it into this triangle hoping more little roots can come out so it looks like this it has our two little tombstones basically and then our big plant Yay! Finally, I'm so excited for this. My table is such a mess at this point, but I think we have really made a pretty big dent in my to-do list. Of course, these are just my indoor plants, but I had to drill a hole at the bottom of this for drainage, and then I spray painted the bottom just because sometimes these pots, water gets into them and it causes them to crackle. We had to wait for that to dry. But yay, in the meantime, I cleaned this up. It is gorgeous. Um, I wasn't sure about, hee haw, but whatever, it's, it's going in there. So for this, I'm just gonna fill the whole thing with indoor potting mix, less prone to gnats, that's cool. I don't think I have enough though. And for this, with like all of its um, roots and stuff, smells healthy and really interesting. I had such success pro propagating my Monstera. I think she just loves to live and she's a mommy. So let's put that in there. Okay, so I'm gonna finish it off with my Cactus potting mix, not ideal. I feel like Monstera, she loves a good tasty drink, but. Well guys, I think that this was a complete success. Thank you guys so, so, so much. Love you and um, it is like eight o'clock. <laughs>